One of my videos with the most views has been the one that shows how to grow the San Pedro cactus from seeds, using a simple method that does not involve sterilizing the soil. I did mention in that video that I would show you later on how to sterilize the soil. And that's what I'm doing in today's video. There are various methods for sterilizing potting soil. You can sterilize it with steam, in a microwave oven, or in a conventional oven. Many years ago, when I was just starting with seeds, I would sterilize soil in a microwave oven. I've since switched to a pressure cooker. But if you want to know about the microwave method, I will describe that near the end of the video. So now, the pressure cooker method. I start off by preparing the soil to be sterilized. My recipe from the video How to Grow the San Pedro Cactus from Seeds was 50% potting soil and 50% perlite. You only need to sterilize the potting soil, not the perlite, which is already quite sterile. This is why you should always be careful picking up the perlite with a clean wash container and then closing the bag right after you use it, so as not to contaminate the inside. Also, perlite can be interchanged with pumice, as long as you get pumice in a small enough size. You need 3 to 6 mm pumice, that's 1 8 of an inch to a quarter of an inch. But unlike perlite, Pumice has to be sterilized if you're starting from seeds. I will upload a video on how to sterilize pumice in just a few days for those of you who are interested. As far as the potting soil is concerned, you should really try to get some unfertilized soil because very young seedlings do not tolerate well fertilizer. That includes earthworm castings, which in any case would lose their properties if sterilized. So never give worm castings to young seedlings and never sterilize castings either. It is very important that you remove the hard bits from the soil. They will be detrimental to the health of the seedlings if you leave them in. You can do that by hand, one by one, but a much quicker and efficient way to do it is by using a sieve. I like to reuse old things instead of buying new ones, so here I am using the front cover of an old fan, which is perfect due to its curved shape. Like this, you can quickly and easily collect most of the hard, not fully decomposed pieces and discard them. You will now have a soil that is very fine. Wet it with rainwater or bottled spring water, but not tap water as it contains too much chloride. The soil should be slightly wet, but not to the point that a lot of water drips when you squeeze it with your hand. A couple of drops are ok. Then you put the soil in glass jars. The ones you can see here in the video are all fruit jam containers. Push the soil in so that there is no large pockets of air, but don't compact it too much. When you close the lids, don't screw them completely and instead leave them a bit loose so that some air can pass through during the cooking. Then I like to place some aluminum foil on top to help the soil stay sterile after it is cooked, should you need to leave it in the jars for some time before you use it. The aluminum foil is a bit of a kill I think, but I got used to doing that when I was growing mushrooms, which are a lot demanding in terms of hygiene. I then pour some tap water at the bottom of my cooker about 1 inch and a third or 3.5 centimeters. A good half of it will disappear into vapor during the cooking process. This is just for my cooker. Yours may possibly use up more water, so you may want to start with more water at the bottom, because you don't want to run out of water. You now place the jars in the pressure cooker. Do not let the jars rest directly on the base of the cooker, otherwise the glass could crack with the heat. I have cut this stainless steel support out of an old abandoned shopping trolley. It does the job perfectly. It is 1 inch and a third high or 3.5 centimeters. It does not look like stainless steel anymore, but this is because of many years of use. If you can be bothered to custom make a spacer like I did, you could just place some extra jar lids on the bottom of the cooker to isolate the glass from the cooker base. This is how it looks with four jars sitting on top of the steel support I have made. Four jars is the maximum I can fit in my pressure cooker. Now I set the temperature of my stove to the maximum setting until the valve of the cooker starts releasing a good amount of pressure. I have an induction stove, but of course you can also use a gas stove. Then I turn down my stove a bit and the pressure that comes out of the valve reduces accordingly. From that point onwards, I set my timer for 45 minutes. When my timer rings, I release the pressure knob on the cooker to let all the pressure out and I let the jars cool off. 
If you need more soil, repeat the procedure. I will now show you how I sterilize my pots and trays. The way I do it is I first wash my pots with dishwashing liquid, then I rinse them. To sterilize them, I use warm water with 10% bleach in it. And I just wash the trays with it with a sponge, keeping it always wet for 10 minutes. Now some people like to dip the entire pot in a larger container full of bleach solution and just leave it there for 10 minutes. That's easier, but I don't have a container large enough for my trays to fit in, which is why I use a sponge. Afterwards, I rinse my tray thoroughly. Then I dry them, and what I personally like to do is wipe them with alcohol, although that is probably not necessary. As soon as the tray is sterilized, I empty my jars of sterilized soil into the tray, plus the same amount of perlite. From there onwards, you basically follow my video, How to Grow the San Pedro Cactus from Seeds. Another thing I mentioned in the introduction is that I would show you how I used to sterilize soil with a microwave oven. This is not my favorite method and I will tell you why right away. Because the amount of time you should cook it for depends on the power of the microwave. To make sure you have the soil at the right temperature, you will need to check it with a mid thermometer. And if you cook it for too long, it can be detrimental to the soil. Anyway, here's how I used to do it. I would put two pounds or one kilo of slightly wet soil into a food grade plastic Ziploc bag. The bag must be microwave oven safe because other types of plastic will melt. And I would bake it at full power for one and a half minute with the bag open at the top. The main problem with that method is that full power on a microwave depends on how powerful the oven is. For instance, with a smaller microwave oven of less than 1000 watts, you should microwave longer for two and a half minutes. At the end, you should always check the temperature in the center of the soil with a mid thermometer. And it should be 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 82 to 93 degrees Celsius. You then immediately close the bag and let it cool. Some people who don't want to bother with checking the temperature just microwave it for five minutes. But cooking the soil too much can produce toxins. So the microwave oven method sounds like the easiest, but it is not really. You can do it if you don't have a pressure cooker, otherwise follow my method. It's easy and works perfectly. Now, if after watching this video, you're thinking, wow, this is too much trouble for me. I don't want to sterilize soil. Well, in this case, don't. You don't have to. Nature does not sterilize soil. My dad has been growing cactus from seeds without sterilizing and he's done okay. It's just that sterilizing allows to reduce the amount of problems that can occur later on, but it's not compulsory. The idea here is to have fun growing cacti. And if sterilizing is not fun for you, then do without it. All for now. If that was helpful, please hit like. And if you want to learn more about cactus cultivation, especially the San Pedro and the peyote, make sure you subscribe and check my other videos. Talk to you soon.